Hey guys, it's me Dave from the Kodo, back with another tutorial for you today. Today we're going to be messing around with the uh, Raspberry Pi. I had a Raspberry Pi B, uh, Model B laying around, decided I wanted to play some retro games on it. So I'm going to use, I'm going to show you how to get retro Pi up and running on this, on the Raspberry Pi. This is uh, going to be about a three video series showing you various uh, aspects of that process. But the first one just showing you how to get the, Ra the retro Pi operating system on your SD card and get it running on, on your Raspberry Pi and then we'll move on from there so uh, materials that you're gonna need for this for this video uh, I have a Raspberry Pi B it's not the B plus it's not the Raspberry Pi 2 just the B so in that case I only need an SD card I have a 4 gig SD card class 10 uh, for the faster read and write and a little bit better um, 4 gigs is enough you can definitely go uh, much much more uh, the, re the retro Pi file is about 1.2 gigs so uh, keep that in mind I have a USB Super Nintendo controller that I got, uh, eBay or Amazon, I don't remember. Nothing serious. It's like five or six bucks. It, it was cheap. It works. Here's the USB control or plug-in for my controller. Here's my uh, video and audio out HDMI. If you're not using HDMI, obviously you need to have uh, your video out and your audio out. If you want both of those, obviously you want video. And then I have power. For this video, these are the only things you're going to need. We won't need internet yet, uh, so that'll be in the next video. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the actual RetroPie uh, operating system, the image. So you're going to want to go to blog.petrockblock.com slash RetroPie. It's kind of hard to say. I'll put a link to that in the description. From here, you'll see there's a ton of information. There's actually some forums if you're having any issues. But you're going to want to go here and you want to go to Downloads. Inside of the download section, you'll see there's uh, about four or five different uh, ways of getting uh, the, the image file. I highly recommend you use the torrent method. It's the quickest. Like I said, this file is about 1.2 gigs, so it, uh, it takes a little bit of time to download if you're downloading it straight from a mirror. A torrent being the fastest version of that or method of getting that that image file uh, the next file you're going to need is win32 disk imager if you're on a windows machine uh, this is going to allow you to write that image to the sd card so that it is not just storing the data but actually using the data to run as an operating system and let me bring that file up for you you can see here what it looks like uh, you're going to find your image file which you downloaded from RetroPie and you're going to select your device when you put the SD card in your computer uh, and then you just hit write. It's going to tell you that it's going to delete everything on the SD card. You're going to obviously want that to happen. Uh, so don't have any important things on that SD card because they're going to be gone. Uh, I'm not going to show you this process. It takes about five or ten minutes to finish writing um, the file. Very simple. Choose your image file, choose your device, hit write. Done. Let me switch views here real quick. Once that has completed, and you have the RetroPie image file written using Win32 Disk Imager to your SD card or micro SD card, depending on the Raspberry Pi version you're using, now we can install everything and get it all up and running. So, SD card inside the uh, Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to plug in my controller just yet, but I'll give it my HDMI. And then I'm going to plug in power, but let me just adjust the uh, the cable real quick. I apologize for the sun in the background. Uh, the next video I'll be capturing the actual screen, not taping it externally. So I'm plugging the power into my Raspberry Pi. You can see there it, it's booting up. It's giving power. And it's going to fire up into um, the, the startup process. Now, the only thing I did prior to this, I didn't hook up a keyboard. I didn't hook up internet. All I did was write the image to the SD file plug in my uh, my video from HDMI and gave it power and you'll see that immediately it jumps right into the RetroPie boot up screen just wait for this to load up takes maybe a 45 seconds from start to finish to get into uh, the actual emulation station GUI and here you'll see that starting emulation station and the first thing we're going to be greeted with is a welcome screen. It says that there's no gamepads detected. Uh, like I said, I didn't I didn't plug in the USB yet. So I'm taking the USB and I'm going to plug it in to my Raspberry Pi. Now, 
I have my USB Super Nintendo controller and it says hold the button on your device to configure it. Now what we're doing is we're configuring the USB device to work with the GUI of RetroPie, not the games. That's going to be in the next video. It's a different process. So I'm going to hold the button and notice that I got a gamepad. In, uh, so now what we're going to do is we literally just choose the buttons that we want for these options. So up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select, and then page up and page down. It does show you here. You, you can't really see it in the video, but it's going to have an L and a R, an R button next to page up and page down. So we're going to use the shoulder buttons on this Super Nintendo uh, USB. And then we click OK. And it's going to boot into the actual GUI. Now, like I said, you're only configuring the controller to work with the GUI. So if I if I go left or right, I can switch between IBM, Apple II, and ports. These are the three things that come with version 2.3 of RetroPie. Uh, once you start putting ROMs on here, which will be in a future video, you will have to you won't be able to use the controller setup until you set that up uh, a little bit different. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. But now we've got it set up, so now we know that RetroPie is running. We're able to get in here. The controller is controlling the GUI, which means it's obviously going to work for the games once we set it up. So we're good to go. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where I show you how to get the controller button set up for the games. And then we'll add ROMs on and we'll see how that runs. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, leave me a comment in the comment section. Give me a like. Check out my channel for some more tips, tricks, LPs, uh, gaming of all sorts. And like always, guys, good luck and have fun.